Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing about a very important community detection algorithm in graphs called as the Lovane algorithm. Uh, so the Lovane algorithm is based on the idea of graph density. That is, it is something related to the number of edges present in a particular uh, cluster that you're forming up. So a node is added to a cluster only and only if it improves in that density else it is ignored from that cluster uh, so before moving ahead uh, we need to understand a very important topic uh, related to the Lovane algorithm called as modularity so what is modularity so here it's the formula 1 upon 2m multiplied by summation of aij minus kikj upon 2m uh, multiplied by the Kronecker delta ci cj function so what the hell is this uh, i'm just not able to understand Let's decode it one by one. Q stands for modularity, as you would have expected. M stands for weights of all the edges in the graph. So for example, if we have five edges in the graph, so the summation of the weight of all the edges, unweighted graph, uh, we would be having the count of the total edges as M. So if we have five edges, M equals to five. Now, this summation part is a bit trickier to understand. So let's uh, go one by one. AIJ refers to the uh, the weight of the edge or one if there is an edge between node i and node j as we are doing a summation so during the summation we would be considering each and every possible pair of node that is possible and see the value for i a j that is whether an edge exists or not if it's a weighted graph so we would be uh, a i j equals uh, a i j equals to its weight else it equals to one if it's a unweighted graph now k i and k j are respectively the degree for the nodes node i and node j that are being considered m we already know now the Kronecker delta function is a bit uh, easy to understand so uh, the c i c j refers to the community currently that has been assigned to node i and node j so if they belong to the same community, the same cluster, like assume we are in some iteration n and they are in the same cluster. So the value for this Kronecker delta function would be 1, else its value would be 0. So, uh, so let's go through an example to understand how modularity is calculated uh, for a better understanding. So consider this uh, 5 nodes graph where we have the following edges between these nodes. Now, uh, when we will be calculating the modularity for the entire graph, uh, eventually uh, for the five nodes, we will be producing 25 summation terms. As I said, key the summation is over each and every possible pair present. So, a summation for, like, for example, uh, when we are considering node number one, so that would go for uh, uh, the value for i and j would go something like this 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. Now, moving to uh, node two, so that would be. Uh, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5. Uh, so like uh, as you have seen the uh, example graph, now we will try to calculate modularity for that particular graph. And eventually here is our formula. So as you remember, we are doing a summation over ij, where i will take values from 1 to 5, and j will take values from 1 to 5 as a 5 node. So we are producing nearly 25 terms in the summation. Uh, uh, one term for each uh, node pair that is that can be possibly present now for each node pair uh, we will be calculating three terms uh, the aij kikj and the Kronecker delta function so uh, if you uh, notice closely the degree for each node in this plot uh, in this graph is two as each node has uh, two edges uh, that, is, uh, have, uh, that is connected to it so eventually ki and kj would always be equal to two uh, throughout the term so that can be taken as a constant and we won't be discussing that for now now we'll be discussing how values for i a j and the Kronecker delta function are changing uh, so considering the first term that we have uh, for node uh, node 1 node i equals to 1 and j equals to 1 so we have a 1 1 now a 1 1 if you notice uh, rep uh, represents a self uh, a self edge now as there is no edge present the value for i uh, for a11 would be equal to 0. Uh, so 0, uh, as you can see, 0 minus, as we said, ki, ki and kj would always be 2 as every node has uh, a degree 2. 
2 into 2 upon 2 into 5. 5 is equal m is equals to 5 because we have 5 edges in this graph as it is an unweighted graph. And the Kronecker delta function equals to 1. Now this is something interesting. So if you notice that uh, as both i and j equals to 1, eventually uh, c1 and c2 would lie in the same community because it is the same node itself. So our node can't present in two communities. So eventually this becomes a 1. Uh, now moving on to the second point uh, that is i equals to 1 and j equals to 2 as you can see here. So we have an edge here. So now in this case the value for a i j becomes 1 minus 2 into 2 it's again k i k j is similar and uh, this is the formula is similar discussing the Kronecker function here uh, the Kronecker function now it's a bit tricky uh, the Kronecker c1 comma c2 uh, this is because uh, as we said initially we start uh, uh, as all the nodes are belonging to a different community as we're just starting up assume it to be the initial iteration so each node is assumed to be present in the different community now if that's the case uh, the Kronecker delta function would become zero because as we discussed earlier the Kronecker delta function would be one only if both the nodes the i node and the jth node are present in the same community but here they are present in different communities in this particular uh, iteration so we take it as zero and the whole terms become a zero now uh, similarly for a13 and a14 or a15 uh, these terms become zero because the Kronecker delta function is zero for them and this is how uh, modularity for the entire graph is calculated. We will be going till uh, A54 and A55 as well. So there will be a total 25 terms coming in, out of which in the initial iteration just 5 would be uh, giving us some value and rest of them would be giving us a 0 because initially each node is present in a different community. As we are starting, we don't know the communities. And hence, uh, every of uh, these terms will become zero, but only the terms which are self nodes, that is uh, a11, a22, a33, a44, a55, uh, will present because each node is present in its own community. Like when the value for the uh, Kronecker delta function is something like c1 and c1, uh, c2 and c2. So in that case, it becomes a one, and eventually only five terms will remain in the initial iteration. This is how modularity for a graph is calculated. So now we have understood how modularity is calculated, but that's not the end. It's just the starting of the Louvain algorithm. So uh, let's discuss how the Louvain algorithm works and uh, we will soon catch it up with it. So initially, as I said earlier, when we're beginning with the Louvain algorithm, we assume each and every node belongs to a different community. Uh, now, uh, in the first iteration, we will, what we are trying to do is we will be trying to assign each ith node to its neighboring uh, jth nodes community and check whether the modularity for the graph increases or decreases. So for example, uh, if we initially have this graph, so what we will do is we will try keeping a 1 and 2 in the same community now uh, and rest of them in different communities and we will check whether uh, by putting in this condition, how does the modularity value changes. So if you remember uh, when you we were calculating the modularity in the above example, all the terms uh, except the A11, A22, A33, A44 and A55 terms, uh, every other term was going zero because the Kronecker delta function was zero. Now uh, because each and every node was present in a different community. But now as we said key in the first iteration itself what we are trying to do is just keep on every ith node, we are trying to assign it to its uh, neighboring node called as jth node and then calculate the modularity. So for example, here what we will be doing that uh, in this case, uh, the Kronecker delta function for C1 and C2 will take it as 1 because we are assuming that if node 1 was present in the same community as node 2, uh, what would happen in the modularity? And if the modularity increases as compared to the previous state, we will, uh, assign, C, uh, we will assign node 1 as the same community as node 2. We will be iterating through the entire, uh, we will be iterating through the entire graph like this only uh, by considering uh, every node and assigning it a community same to as its neighbor and then calculating the modularity for the entire graph and if modularity increases that particular node is assigned the uh, community as same as its neighbor else it is not assigned the same community now uh, once we have reached the maxima modularity like uh, we have iterated to every node and 
even by switching uh, uh, these nodes to different communities, the modularity is just not increasing. So we know that we have reached a saturation point now. So after the saturation point, what we are trying to do is to create a new graph internally in the memory, uh, where uh, all the nodes belonging to a particular community are clubbed together to form a single node in that particular uh, new graph. Uh, so what uh, so what happens next is that. All the nodes are clubbed up to form a single node. All the edges, for example, we found out three communities. Uh, like we had uh, 10 nodes in the uh, sample graph. We were able to identify three communities in the first iteration. So what we will be doing is that we will be uh, clubbing all these three nodes according to the communities into single nodes. And now, uh, the weights of every uh, edge that was going from a node of community A to the node uh, to any node of community B are also clubbed up together uh, to form a single edge between the new node that is formed uh, and similarly any self loops that are present will also be clubbed together to form a new edge I think it's a bit confusing so we should uh, better go and look for an example now this is an example coming from the uh, research paper itself so assume we were in the first step where we haven't done anything the next step is like after calculating modularity adjusting the community for different nodes we are able to identify four communities as you can see the sky blue the dark blue uh, the green and the red ones so we have now got four uh, communities we were uh, this is where we were discussing the modularity part now the next part is the aggregation part where what we are doing is like uh, consider this green uh, community we are clubbing all these nodes into a single node right and any edge going from the green community to any node of the blue community is also summed up to form a single edge between these two no communities now. So, uh, for example, assuming uh, like just assume we have we were having three nodes uh, like a uh, choice an unweighted graph. So you can see that for this blue community, we are having four edges from the green community. That is uh, the two two six, a uh, zero two three. 5 to 7 and 1 to 7. Now, uh, when we are clubbing things up, so we will be adding the total count of the edges as it's an unweighted graph that is equals to 4, and hence we form a weighted graph now, where the edge between the new communities uh, has the weight 4. Similarly, for all the communities, we have formed a new graph or where we are just clubbing up things. Now, once we are able to form this new graph, we will again repeat the same steps as we did earlier that is, uh, iterate over each node and figure out by if we move it. Uh, if we move some node to a community same as its neighbor so like for example if this green node is moved to this uh, the community as same as the red node so uh, we also color it red so with the modularity for this graph increases if yes so we will be assigning it a red a community now so the entire cycle repeats itself uh, until unless there are no changes in the community and we are finally left with the two nodes only that is the green node and the uh, sky blue node